Hi everybody. A few months ago I did a video about the barn find Adam. Hi everybody. You will probably notice what's sitting in front of me here. This is a Coleco Adam. I had a member of the Retro Gamers Club send me two Coleco Adams. One was his uncle's that wasn't working. And this other one he found. He asked me, can I fix his uncle's, make it work again, and I can keep this one here for myself to do what I want to it. So I did. Oh, it came with a little note too. Um, barn find. Cluck, cluck, moo, farm fresh. This is covered in something, hence the gloves. That thing was filthy. It was disgusting. And I wanted to follow up. That was part one. Part two was going to come, but I just could not bring myself to touch that filthy thing again. So all of the parts have been soaking and soaking for about three months. And I finally scrubbed down the controllers and I'm going to now put them back together and test them. So this is part two of the nasty. Well, I'm going to rebuild the Atom controllers. I'm going to move the camera up here so that you can see me doing it. And we'll get started. Come on. Let's do the nasty. Do we have to? Yeah, afraid so. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we need to reassemble the wiring. And since this is an Atom, it has little clips on it instead of the solder. But these clips suck. So I'm going to be soldering them, them, them back into place. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to insert these in here. Like so. I always thought this was a design flaw or they didn't think it out very well. Requiring that you disconnect this from the board to get the back case cover off. Because that makes it a pain in the neck if you want to actually clean it. You can't get it apart really. But... We're going to fix them. We're going to do both of these at the same time. We're going to reassemble both of these controllers. We're going to put the power ring in it. The ring of power. I don't really have a good name for it, but it really works. I've done six of them so far today. And every single one of them were controllers that didn't work and now do work because I added that little upgrade to them. So now on the Atom, they slide on here. They got the col the color names down here. There's nine slots, but there's only six or seven wires. That's because the other two wires are supposed to be for the spinner, which would go here, but they decided not to put that in here in the controller. Originally, it was going to go in there. I don't know why they decided not to. Was it too expensive? Not enough games use a spinner? I don't know. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reassemble these, and let's get out some solder. My soldering iron is warming up. I'm going to reassemble these, take out the glasses so I can see a little, oh, actually I can't see the letters, but put the glasses back on. Vision, don't take it for granted. Alright, violet, we don't have a violet. Red, we have a red. These don't use the same color codes as the ColecoVision, unfortunately. ColecoVision has a different color code scheme. Same colors, but dip, not the same color code. See, they slide on here, but sometimes they don't they don't hang on too well. Sometimes you can get lucky, sometimes they don't. That's an orange and a yellow. A brown. A gray, and I'm, didn't, I'm noticing something here. I'm going to just point it out to you a minute. A gray. blue, and a green. What I'm noticing is, oh, 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 get on there. Hey, stop it. Don't want to break my wires here. Is this. Here is a ColecoVision controller. You can see the solder directly in. But notice how the white and the violet in here are interspersed, they're mixed in with the other wiring. Whereas when they redesigned the circuit board for the Atom, they put the violet and the white on the outsides. Maybe to make it easier, I don't know, but they did that. So we're going to put these two together. Do this one next, same thing. I want uh, red. Then when I'm done, I'm going to tap a, pat, a little bit of solder on each one so they don't come apart. Red. 
orange. Yellow. Now you may be saying, well, why solder them if they're going on there and they're sticking pretty good? Because they come off, and because this metal is really flimsy and fragile, these little clips, and it just breaks. I've had them just go put them on there, slide them on, and let it sit there, and then it just snaps and comes loose. So I'm going to hit it with a, coat of, a bit of solder. I don't think they'll ever have to be taken off again. If they do, well, either I or somebody else will have to use some solder, a soldering iron to loosen it up. And one more green. Now, I'm going to take this little soldering iron, the old heat stick, and we're just going to heat this up and we're going to put some solder in. Now I can take glasses off to solder. Just want a little bit of bead of solder along the edge there, just to lock it in place so it don't go anywhere. You notice I'm not using any flux. This solder already has flux in it. It works really good, so I don't bother putting more flux on it unless I really can't get something to stick. And I've never had problems with this solder sticking it. It's very thin with a flux in the middle of it. It's what I use to build cartridges, and it works really well. And right as I'm saying that, I come across ones that are so dirty. I had to scrape to get the solder to stick to it. Watching somebody solder is almost as much fun as watching somebody paint. Unless I was Bob Ross, then it would be exciting to watch me paint. All right, those are done, and I can unplug the soldering iron because I should be done with that. Now that we've soldered them back together, we can start reassembling these cartridges and see what we got going. Or cartridges, these controllers, and see what we got going. I have yet to test these. I don't even know if they work. But like I said, these came out of the barn find. These were from the nasty, and I didn't want to do anything but strip them apart and yeah, not touch them again. So that's what I did. Now I'm going to reassemble these things, and then we'll test them out. Someday I want to find a source for these screws, so that you can get brand new screws in these controllers, either black or silver. Get some nice pretty ones, because they get a little rusty with age. I mean, it doesn't hurt. I mean, that's nitpicking, but they just don't look good. Now once I get this assembled, once I get the keypad on here, I'll switch the camera back down so you can actually watch me testing it. Let's look at the keypad. I'm looking to see if any of the mylar, the trace materials, been scraped, the conductive materials have been scraped off, and these look good still. So again, we haven't tested these, but I'm going to assume they work. You know what they say about assuming? Yeah, it might work. Might work. That ain't what they say. Now using this, you've probably seen this, if not, this is just a piece of cardboard stock. You put it in here to help guide it. It keeps the plastic from plopping around. Then you, once you get it in there a little bit, press it down and press it down on the cardboard stock so it doesn't fold and wiggle it in. See? So easy putting them in like that. You try it the other way and you may get lucky, you may not get lucky, you may just end up breaking the mylar. This, on the other hand, works every time. It's a fascinating little trick. Yeah. yeah. See this is not sticking to that. Let's get a little bit of tape. 
I'm going to take a little piece of masking tape here, and I'm going to attach the cover. See how the cover is loose, it's not holding on to the mylar? It's going to attach it to the mylar, just so it's not flopping around inside the case, just like that. I'm going to put one on the other side too. Do I have to do that? No, but this plastic is used to help reinforce the mylar so it doesn't break and crack. So, attach it so it does its job. Then now, now it's hanging on to mylar. Put this right there. And, I just realized I made a mistake. This is like the third time I've done this today. You notice I did not put them in? They got to go in before I put that screw in. So, let's unscrew that a little bit. Slide these in. I've rebuilt them and had them completely together. Then look at them and realize I forgot to put the buttons back in. Those are when when you do that. That's when you realize you know you need to step away, go do something else for a while. So there we got that. I'm gonna do the other one here, and then I'm going to turn the camera so that you can see the. TV or the video, the monitor, the telebox, as I'm testing it. Let's keep this going here. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to put the power ring in it. So I'm going to move to the other, move the camera down here now. All right, so I'm all hooked up over here now. We're going to put this to turn on and we're going to test these to see if they work before we put the ring on them and close them up. First off, fire buttons. Nothing. Oh, getting some, so. Looks like I could do some cleaning in there. Bad fire buttons on those two. Ooh. Bad fire buttons on those two. Ooh, we got we got issues. Nothing on that. Oh, look at this. These are not in good shape. Look at this mess. Keys are all over the place. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, it hung. Hmm, hmm. Let's see. Okay, controls are working. None of the keypad is working, so I'm assuming the keypad's bad. This keypad, on the other hand, seems to have a little give life to it. So, we're going to do some swapping here. I'm going to shut it off. Pull this keypad out. Take this keypad. Put it in here. And I'm going to also clean that fire button too. Now let's just see if we can get one working. And then we put that one to the side. Then we work on the next one. I may have to trim the ends on it. But we'll see. And the fire button. Contact cleaner on here. Or the arm button. Do them both at the same time. And even though these work... I'll spray them out. Get all the liquid out. So, yeah, you come out of there. You don't need to be there no more. Now, let's see what she does now. We're just going to be testing controller one because controller two, I just pull it apart a little bit. Okay, both fire buttons work. The directions work. Keypad works. Alright, so we're good. This one's a good controller here. So, let's shut that off again. I'm going to assemble it. It's easier if it's not hooked up to assemble it. I'm going to take the ring of power, the little simple ring that I designed. And if you're a Retro Game Club member, you can download the STL file. Well, even if you're not a member, you can download the STL file. If you are a Retro Game Club, Retro Game Club member, you can get four of these for free. If you're in the United States, just send us an email and we'll put them in the mail to you. If you're outside of the United States, then I'd have to charge you shipping. In the United States, I can send it as a first-class letter. The four pieces fit in there. 
and it's just a first class letter. Outside, though, it's going to cost a little more. Though I think in Canada, I'd probably get away for $1.20 shipping. I'm not sure about the other countries. If you're not a Retro Game Club member and you don't have a 3D printer, we are looking at putting them together for a sale. Maybe four of them for like five bucks. We'll see. Something through the store. Plus shipping. It's a very simple thing that I came up with. But it is so darn effective and works so well. And you're going to see this. I mean, it basically takes these controllers up to the next level in how they work. Let's unplug you for a No, I'll leave you plugged in. I'm going to work on you next. But let's do... Let's get you plugged in. Okay. Back to here. I'm going to trim this one down and see if I can get it working and figure out what else is going on in this one. But for now, let's get this one out of the way. Make sure it's working correctly. And we put it to the side. Look at that. The nasty old barn find is working perfectly now. Now, onto this one again. What we got? Do I have a wire? I might have a bad wire. I have to check the wiring on this one. Because I'm not getting nothing on north and... That could be causing my issue too. All right, let's shut this off. Let's do a quick cleaning and see if that makes any difference. If this doesn't help it, then I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna check these wires to make sure I got good contact on them. And make sure I actually got the right, this should be the right colors. But we'll check just to be sure. Get out of there, water. Or contact me. Get out. Alright, well, while we're at it, let's unplug the good one. Put you over to the side here. And let's take the next one. And we'll see what we can figure out with this one. See if we can get it back to life. This is worn out in the, front, in the end there, so I'm going to trim that. I was just looking at it now, I can see it, it does have some wear in it. So, let's see if we can get this part done. Still no north. We got both the fire buttons now, so. Do we have a loose wire or is this north dead? Shut her off again. I'm going to trim this keypad the end because as I said it has some wear so it's quite possible it's not making a good contact so as you see it's, it's kind of hard to see but I am trimming it off and yeah it had a lot of wear in it now that I was looking at it with the light shining through it we'll put that back on here See how easy it is with that using this stuff. It's so easy. To do. Now, where is my sandpaper? I'm going to see if I can get something in there to clear that contact. Get a nice good cut of sandpaper going here. Alright, now. Uh, looks like I gotta remove it to get to it. All right. Well, I'm out. Check the wires: red, orange, yellow, brown, gray, blue, green, and everybody is soldered in good. Nobody's moving. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this contact with the sandpaper. I'm going to try that first. Get it in there. So you do you slide the sandpaper inside then press the contact close and pull the sandpaper out. This paper is getting a little weak. I'm going to have to find me some better paper. There.
Now let's try it again. I'm just going to leave it out of the case this time. I'm just testing that one contact. Get over there into the slot. I did mention in another video that I was going to make an extension to plug these in. Then someone let me know that if you unplug and plug them in while the power is on, you take a chance on shorting out your LS or your 74 LS 540, 541 or 541 chip in there. And I've replaced a number of them, and they're no fun. So I said, you know, I won't do that anymore. Let's see, north. No go on the north. All right. Let's see what we got on the other side. Let's try the, the direct connect. I'm just going to take this and see if I can get a direct connect to get a north. No. No, okay. So, is it possible I got a bad wire down here? It's possible. Did I make a bad connection down here? I could have a bad diode too that's stopping north from working. See, all the others are working, but. It's almost like North was crushed down, like somebody was getting really mad that it wasn't working and they shoved it down real hard. What I'm do is I'm going to spread the spring out a little bit in here. Still nothing. And yeah, you're just not making a contact. When I do a direct connect between the two parts here, I should, if it's going to work, it will worked there but it's not so running just looking at the wiring do a quick this diode right here may be the problem eh I may have to do some soldering on this one to fix it further Let's just do a little cleaning back here, make sure I'm not getting any kind of shortage going on. Let's see if I can get the detect north anywhere. Uh, which one is it going to be? Outside. Uh, yeah, make it so I can't figure out which one. I'm trying to. I'm trying to follow the tracings down here, and I can't figure out which one. I think it's going to be green and. This is not fun. Well, it is, but it isn't fun. Let's just see. I'm just going to see any chance that I got like a bad contact down here. I'm trying to like force the contact. Nope. All right, so this one's going to take a little bit to determine what's wrong with it, which is fine. All right, sorry about that. Battery died on me. So it looks like what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take this thing apart and chase down what's wrong with it. It's probably a diode or a trace or something, but I'll figure out which one it is and I'll fix it. And we'll put it back together and then we'll have both barn fine atoms will be working. That'll be part three. And maybe I can go on to the data drive for that one too. Have a good day.